Hello, this is Mike Carney of uh, Product Marketing at Natiza. We're here at the uh, NZ Universe uh, conference. I'm now joined with, by David Birmingham. David is uh, an enterprise solutions architect from Brightlight Consulting and really an expert with Natiza. Now, David, uh, first question I've got, I know you've written a couple of books. You've got a new book out about Natiza. Just tell us a little bit about right, that. Right, that's uh, Natiza Transformation. It's on Amazon.com. It's a follow-on to Natiza Underground, which I published about t three years ago. So it may be a little late in coming, but we, uh, it, it kind of ties a bow around all the subject matter. Uh, uh, everything from doing uh, migrations to uh, how to do a, a lot of set-based kind of things, exception processing, referential integrity checking, things that people ask a lot of questions about. And the, the teaser does really well, but I, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so let's drill into just one of those. And the first thing that people really think about when they sort of consider the teaser, migrations. Right. So let's just 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 give us some advice. If, if I'm migrating from some database system to the teaser, can you give us some sort of high level advice about how to approach that task? Okay, so th th that, that's, this is a good question. It comes up a lot. So when you're migrating from, uh, from say Oracle or, or Sybase or you know, one of those standard platforms, Typically, uh, that box has been running out of gas. It's been uh, going underpowered, and then there are a lot of engineers working on it, and so they've been propping up the performance. So that when people first examine it, they can't really tell the difference between what is a performance prop and what is real functionality. So the first thing I tell them is, you have a lot of artificial complexity, and you should su just declare suspect everything in the box and actually functionally identify the things you want to take with you and then take that stuff and leave the rest behind, send it a birthday card and, and, and leave it. But, but in, in the end, what you get is a functional port of what you want to keep and all the, all the engineering and all the artificiality, it just gets left behind. That, that's a real serious problem. A lot of people will say, take everything you've got and find a new home for it and that's, that's the wrong approach. Right, so essentially you're not really thinking about the teaser as a new environment, you're just bringing over a lot of legacy stuff because you're used to doing that. Right, right. So are there, are there two or three traps that you see, that apart from that, that you see people running into again and again that you could sort of warn them against? Right, well, you know, the, the, the box is so fast that, that you can you can dig yourself out of a ditch really fast. What a lot of people do is they, they come in and try to try to bring in something that's very uh, very large, uh, like a large process or a software development life cycle, and they try to etch stuff in stone very early. What the tease allows you to do is do some experimentation and prototyping or profiling. It kind of muns the data around and, and treat it like cookie dough, really. That's one of the phrases that I use because because like cookie dough. Like cookie dough, yeah. And, and, and you can do you know billions of records and just build up a model. If you don't like it, toss it. You haven't lost anything. You just keep going. And what that does, it allows you to refine the model very quickly. Uh, but one of the mistakes people make is they try to lock all that stuff down very, very soon, and then it becomes very brittle, and it becomes functionally unworkable, and they find themselves sort of in a rut too soon. And it shouldn't be that way. Just, just start working with the data and, and, and let the data flow, and, and put the data in the box. It's very fast. If you, if you drive yourself into a ditch, it's got the power to get yourself out. Right. So, so you really don't have any fear, just go for it. Okay. One of the things on the back of the book, I say, you know, big data, complex data, it's what's for dinner, is because uh, when, when you really look at the, at the data, now we're, we're able to chew this stuff up and spit it out, but where before, it, it was something to be afraid of. Right. It was so big, it was, it, and, and people would say, I've got too much size, so I can't add any new functionality to it, or I've got too much complexity, so I can't grow the data. The minute they put in the teaser, both of those escalate very quickly, so you need a platform that's going to grow with you right away, not something that you can add on to a few years from now. Now it's going to grow on both sides of that, of that equation. And so when the data volume starts to grow, you need someone that's not going to run out of gas, you know, day five. Right, <laughs> so. right. Okay, so there is some really good advice there. When you're migrating to Natiza, you've got to sort of ditch a lot of your previous thinking and just embrace this new world of actually using data as an asset and working and reworking the, uh, the asset. And Natiza allows you to do that. David, thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you very much.